What's going on, guys? Happy New Year, and welcome to the first episode of Takes the Tuesday of 2019. Hopefully, you guys had an awesome New Year's. I don't know why I'm doing a gun. Um, right that's how we America. do it. That's how we do it in America, baby. <laughs> Up in the mountains. We're not even in the mountains. We're near the fucking ocean. Um, my name's Seth. <laughs> I'm Chevy. And uh, quick reminder that we are in a new month now, so make sure to download and play Steep and Portal Nights. Both offer for free on PlayStation Plus whenever they become available. And come back at the end of the month. We'll talk about them on Plus Club. Uh, let us know we thought of them. We'll let you know we thought of them. And our game of the month, new game of the month, is Stardew Valley. It's been around for a while. It's pretty much uh, Harvest Moon, but now has multiplayer and it has its own characteristics uh play that come back at the end of the month for game of the month and we're going to talk about that also we have a discord link down below click it talk to us anytime all the time it's a good time and uh we are on itunes spotify and other podcast platforms if if you'd prefer to listen to us and if you're listening to us and you want to watch us we film every single episode on youtube at tasty loot gaming so check us out there uh yeah so first episode 2019 we got two topics to talk about it's actually kind of slim pickings but there is stuff to talk about uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, but we uh, aren't, but I'm going to bring up anyway. Uh, PlayStation Classic went down in price, $60 right now. It was 100 bucks. Quick speculation. I think it's because the lineup wasn't what people wanted. And it uh, doesn't come with an AC adapter uh, to plug it into the wall, which is weird. And uh, a lot of the games are PAL uh, versions, so they lag. Oh, weird. The Tekken, I guess, lags when you play it. So... Bad design decision, and uh, they didn't sell as many units as they wanted to. I mean, that's really what it comes down to for the price point. I can't imagine it being anything else. When I saw it at sixty bucks, I was going to buy it because I wanted. I was going to buy it at full price anyway. And I saw the lineup. I'm like, ah, it could be better, but it still has Final Fantasy VII. It still has Metal Gear Solid. I like the nostalgia of it. Looks really neat. And then I started like, you know, I like when I buy anything. I looked up reviews and shit, and people are bitching for the typical reasons. It doesn't have what I want on it, and all that stuff. Or this is a gimmick. The Nintendo did it first, which they didn't. Um, but then people were like, it doesn't come with a fucking a plug-in to the wall. Like, that's weird. I'm like, yeah, that is weird. Mm-hmm. And then people were like, oh, it has PAL fucking uh, versions, the European versions of the games that didn't run uh, the same way. So they lag. And I'm like, that's not, I don't like that either. How random. Yeah. So I think the AC fucking adapter, though, was the big thing for me, though. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I don't want to buy anything that I have to fucking find my own way to plug it into something. Not for that price point, especially. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you're buying, uh, it's going to sound like a weird way to put this. You're not like you're buying a console. You're buying a, essentially a toy at, at that I mean, point. you're you're buying a fucking, uh, a goddamn flash stick with an emulator on say, it. It's a glorified Raspberry Pi. That looks, that looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's know in the comments real quick. Uh, what do you think the... Um, the 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 price drop signifies i think it's pretty straightforward and um did you buy one are you planning to buy one do you think the price point at sixty dollars is worth buying or would you hold out for something lower we're not interested at all for various reasons let us know in the comments below first bit of news so uh atlas had an announcement that they are releasing persona 5r a new version of the acclaimed rpg uh, that was pretty much the extent of what they said, uh, with the ex- the exception of that more information coming uh, March this year. Now, uh, there is some speculation there, and I think both of them are worth bringing up because they make a lot of sense. In the past, they have made uh, enhanced versions with extra content of Persona 3 and 4, so there's a good chance that it'll be like that as well, where it's just the same game but with more. Um or the other speculation is with the announcement of Joker coming to Smash Bros. Maybe there's a Switch port around the corner as well. So those are the two po- po- uh, points of, of speculation um, that is in this as well. What do you? Uh, what do we think about uh, the possibility of it being an enhanced version or even a Switch port? I think the Switch port makes the most sense. Uh, I think the game could easily run on a Switch. Um, and it'd be exciting for people who own Switch or people who are fans of the series who have a Switch as well and would like to play it portably. Um, an enhanced version was where my money was. Um, the game hasn't been out for that long, so hopefully they'd just be adding content. That's maybe what they did with the last two games. Yeah, so. so that would be cool. Um, I never beat the game, um, so 
it's not really for me just yet until I beat it. I mean, I just now recently beat Final Fantasy 15, so never say never when it comes to beating something. We're both um, usually behind. Well, you you were good this last year, though. Oh, I fucking killed it in 2018. Just catching um, up on the year before games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 17 was really hard. I was adjusting to the channel and the demand of playing games and all that shit. In 2018, I was like, I gotta beat these games now. Um, stay aggressive. And then I was like, there's a lot of games I skipped over 2017. I, I gotta fucking go back and play. Um, I still want to beat Persona 5. I want to beat Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 before fucking 3 comes out. I got a month. And that game's creepy as hell to me. Um, the first Kingdom Hearts. Uh, but yeah, uh, the Switch thing would be cool. I think a some something that has to do with the actual game, or both, would be cool. Um, but uh, something that adds to the game, new content would be really exciting. If it was something completely new and different. I know they got those weird dance games that mm-hmm. came out recently. Um, and it also says that they have multiple projects in the works. So... Um, I'm wondering. Well, I know one of them is Shin Megami for sure because they announced that already. Before, yeah. So. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know if they would use that as vague wording of projects when that's already been talked about. Yeah. Especially know. when they released three games all at once of dancing games. That's projects. So yeah. I mean, they could be doing anything. Um, it's exciting though, just because uh, I think Persona Five. Uh, really kind of nailed it and um i think it's really well re- received so they got to ride that wave um not in a way of like you know exploiting that success of just kind of doing cheap shit over and over again but um but you know just adding more content and making new stuff that's exciting putting it on other consoles so any of those things are good options um if it is something else um that's not one of those two things of its own thing i you know i'd be curious to see what it is but it, i mean I don't think they would be making something else just because they're still calling Persona Five R. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm hoping it's uh, it's it's uh, why well, I, I think both are good. I think both are good, but I, for me, would prefer um, some kind of new content, um, upgraded version. Yeah, and I, and so to just kind of go off of that, I actually I think it's going to be an enhanced version like they've done already with the last two games. Mm. Um, I mean the naming. It in itself kind of lends it to that, I think, because Persona 3 was like FES or something like that, and Persona 4 was the golden uh, version of the game or whatever. Um, the golden? Yeah, it was Persona 4 Golden is the name of the game. So they're really good about just having simple, vague Oops. fucking uh, cool. Cool. names. Oh, shit. Yeah. And then, uh, so I think that's kind of where my money is on that one, but I do think it'd be very cool if they did do the Switch one as well. In fact, it'd be cool if... By projects, they meant, hey, we're also doing, we're doing both these things uh, because they most of the Persona games were also on Vita, so portables also in their wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, if they announced both, that'd be really awesome because it is more people who have access to the game. And uh, if the R version is the one coming uh, to Switch, you're just getting an enhanced version of the game after right that. That that game, would be so. that would, that's a good way to put it. That'd be cool if they just released R as a game and it was happening to come out to Switch. Yeah. Um. Which just you know we're past it at this point. I'm I'm done being just thoroughly impressed by the Switch. Uh, it's just it's just a console that's killing it like uh, the rest of them. But uh, it would just further legitimize the Switch as you know a console like everything else. Mm-hmm. It's not you know like prior Nintendo consoles that were more like toys um, or their own individual thing. You know they they just get whatever else gets. And throwing Persona Five on the Switch would only make sense for sure. So and it would just add you know more very types of games for people who own switches because it already has a good library of like all sorts of games you got fucking wolfenstein 2 uh you know you doom. got doom you got rpgs you got your nintendo fair which is a pretty varied uh you know lot of genres um so you know throwing persona 5 on there fucking throw final fantasy 15 on there i don't know if it run on there Ooh, yeah i don't know <laughs> it's it's not the most amazing looking game but it's a Big open games. So there's a lot going Draw on there. Draw distance would yeah. have to come way down. You'd have to drop the graphics a little bit, and the game already kind of looks janky sometimes, and then amazing other times. I need to stop talking about Final Fantasy 15. It keeps coming up. Everything I talk about, I'm like, in Final Fantasy 15, <laughs> <laughs> you, you recently played it, so it makes yeah, sense. I recently beat it. That was fucking. That was an experience. Um, yeah, I think where, what you said though, I think that would be the coolest of the situations. Mm. And if it was something new, I just thought of this and it's not going to be this, but if I was thinking of like a new game that they're making based off of this, it'd be cool if they made like a tactical RPG. It would be. I'd be um, into that. I mean, they're obviously not afraid of, of taking the characters and putting them in different situations. The dancing game is a great example of that like that is so like not the same thing is what they made. So looking cool. Joker. 
Well, in that regard, I guess it's the same. <laughs> That's what that little cat dude says all the time. We're gonna. Little cat, yeah. Looking cool, Joker. <laughs> he, Yeah, he's always looking cool. That is and the they, point. They definitely let him know. Is that a boy or a girl? Morgana is a girl name, but... I haven't beat it. So I, don't I have know. no idea. It sounds like a little kid to me. Anyway, mm-hmm. anything else you want to say on that? Nope. Let us know in the comments. Uh, first off, have you played Persona 5? Secondly, what do you think Persona 5 R is or the multiple projects they're working on? Uh, let's speculate a bit. And what are you hoping for it to be? Do you think we're, uh, we're on the money with the uh, uh, enhanced version? potentially coming out to switch as well which would be cool do you think it's a completely different thing uh and do you have uh any information on it that that we might not have although this is very fresh and it seems like nobody has information on this but let's know everything you're thinking about when it comes to persona 5 r in the comments below second bit of news uh so there's a lot to this so i'm going to read from directly from the article but um in in short activision is uh set to fire their cfo uh and they have not said why um I'll read from this and then I'll add a little bit of what I've read uh, off of this article. So Activision Blizzard has placed the company's chief financial officer, Spencer Newman, which I think is very important also to say that the CFO, before we get into why we think he's getting fired, um, CFO does not have anything to do with development of games. They they purely look out for the financial interests of the company because some CEOs don't even think about how money and finances work with companies. That's mm-hmm. what the CFO is there for. They're the one that, that gives them that kind of guidance. So that's what he d- did. Uh, is on paid leave of absence after informing him that it intends, uh, Activision Blizzard intends to terminate him from his position. So this is already kind of interesting because they're letting people know they intend to fire this guy. Investors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> CNBC reports the share price of Activision Blizzard dropped by 1% after the news became public, which is pretty standard because anytime anything shifts in a company, people get scared. Uh, Public of uh, the company's plans. This did not help the company's 26% total share loss over the past year. This is actually something that's, I'm kind of adding my own tidbits here. This is actually something that's really common in the AAA games recently, which is kind of weird. A lot of people are speculating that we are actually in the first year, 2018 was the first year of a AAA crash that's happening again. Um, which I think there's a lot of um, evidence for. Uh, The details of the plans to let Newman go can be found in a regulatory filing made by Activision Blizzard. It states that the termination is unrelated to the company's financial reporting or disclosure controls and procedures. It also states that the paid leave of absence is in place to allow Newman to demonstrate there is no cause to terminate his employment. Uh, Sounds like fluff talk to me. Uh, During this time, and effective as the new year, former CFO Dennis Durkin, who is the now current chief corporate officer, will take over Newman's duties. If Newman doesn't regain his role as CFO, which I don't think he will, uh, after the paid leave, then Durkin will take over permanently. Um, a source close to the issue has said that this has all occurred after Netflix had poached Newman to take on the role as CFO at the streaming company. Newman also worked at Disney prior to coming on as CFO at Activision Blizzard. As of yet, Activision Blizzard has not made any comments such or uh, on such reports. One other thing I'd like to add to this, according to a couple things I've read, is people are saying that they tried to poach uh, Newman and there is evidence that he has been flirting with the idea for months. So uh, if Activision Blizzard caught on to that, they'd obviously be able to see that there is intentions there that don't benefit them. And it would make sense to, um, in the public eye, uh, depart from him in a respectable way by giving him paid leave until they fire him. I hate companies. Yeah, me too. It's it's all fucking... (laughs) politics and people and dice fucking oh they're leaving no they that motherfucker got fired um but you don't say that because it scares people and then money starts shifting um what do we think about uh this situation with spencer newman uh what do we think about the speculation that uh he is fired or that he might come back uh why do we think this is and what do you think about the netflix poaching and him uh courting them so it's funny situation. because the whole time you're reading that, I'm sitting here like going, okay, what what is like a legitimate reason they could have to get rid of him? Because obviously they don't want to give us the information. So I was trying yeah. to think of some ideas. And as soon as you brought up the Netflix thing, I was like, that is 100% got to be it. Mm-hmm. Companies uh, don't share. No. 
I mean, even like, and I'm not even talking like big positions like that. Even if you work for a like entry level position and then you flirt with the idea of going into the same field for another company, that company will usually get rid of you. Yeah. Um, they don't yeah, like loyalty it. really matters. Yeah. They don't, um, it's a conflict of interest, which is exactly what I think happened here. Um, it's like if fucking you were planning on breaking your leg in a, in a month. They're going to be like, well, buy because, yeah, that. you're going to yeah. be expensive. Like, this is going to cause us problems. And, and in the same instance here, uh, instead of it being in his hands where he gets to decide when he leaves and whatnot, they basically go, we're just going to plan this out so it goes smooth for us. Yeah. And that's and that's what it sounds like. And me. a 1% drop is 100 times better than a bigger drop that I can only assume would happen if they just fired him outright. For sure. Because with their stock price dropping and then they fire some guy out of nowhere, people are going to get scared. Yeah, what's happening with Activision yeah. Blizzard? Because investors, when they see that kind of... pissed off with Blizzard lately. So 100%. The, the public perception is already bad. AAA companies are already struggling right now because they're making a lot of fucking mistakes, making really bad decisions, EA. Um, fucking Bethesda, goddamn... Activision Blizzard, mostly Blizzard. Uh, Activision's actually doing pretty decent. Um, it, <clears throat> just with with the drop in stocks already, and then uh, all the problems, public perception with especially Blizzard and what they've been doing, uh, the money they're not ma- the Another thing that I thought about too is Blizzard losing money is not necessarily because they did something bad. It's because they made so much fucking money that now that they're not maintaining it, it's a loss. Yeah. It's natural because the price or, you know, the, the money they're taking in has come down over time, but it's because the standard they've set that's so fucking high with in their height, you know, with Overwatch and WoW, right now they're not making as much as they've ever made. And so it looks really fucking bad. And mm-hmm. it's, and it's, and it's, uh, you know, emptying the tank essentially. So I like climb for so long. So, and they're not doing anything new. And now all their new decisions are pissing people off. And then with this guy, I also believe if the Netflix thing is true, that's why they're getting rid of him because it, you can't do that. Um, he should just jump ship if he was going to do it. Um, they must have been offering him a lot. But um, with all that, this is the best way they can do it because, like I said already, you know, if there's like all that on top of fucking firing some guy ra- randomly, it has to do with money. People who invest in the company are going to go, there's something going on. I don't want my money in this company anymore. Mm. And they start pulling out. And then you get something like fucking, you know, Telltale. Where investors just go, we're out of here. This yeah. doesn't look good. Big and then investors. they're like, well, we're yeah. fucked. <laughs> so, um, you know, I mean, it's technically gaming news, but it's more like financial business news. It is. That, that affects all of us. Um, but it's really interesting um, because I, the, the big thing that struck me about this topic is companies typically don't announce to the public they're getting rid of someone in a smooth fashion i think you nailed that when you said that this is the the this is a smooth um it's them taking the reins yeah but in a way that doesn't scare everybody for sure um they want to stay investors. in control of the entire situation they yeah. don't want it to be a surprise they don't want it dropped on their lap if they just maintain the 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 decisions and the course they can choose the PR approach. They can choose how the money is going to this guy and how they can replace that guy without having to do it on the fly. Mm-hmm. So it's just uh, it's better for them as a business. So, and I was going to ask you too, how do you think this is going to affect the company? But I think the, the route they went, I don't think it is going to affect the company no, because fact, you already see in the stock drop, it's only 1%, which is still, you don't want that to drop any percent. Fucking 1% is better than like when, you know, something drops like 5 6%. Shit like that happens all the time. Yeah. I mean, stock market's up and down. So Well, and anytime anything gets announced that's negative, fucking it'll go. Well, even sometimes positive announcements can make stocks drop. So, I mean, it's yeah. change Depending. in general. Yeah. So, uh, people don't like change and it usually will freak them out, but usually when it's good news, there's an immediate climb again. So, um, I, I, yeah, I just think because of the the weird uh, year they've had, they they definitely wanted to handle this uh, as smoothly as possible and as transparent as possible, which I think mm-hmm. is super important when you're yeah. when we're talking investors. So, especially because, and I I I know Activision's a hated company or whatever, but like I re I really don't like EA and fucking EA's pretty much doing the opposite of what Activision's doing. So I don't think Activision's being like a good guy here because this is just business bullshit that has nothing to do with us. One hundred percent business, yeah. But Activision at least is is trying to do this in a smart way mm-hmm. and not, I mean, EA is a fucking mess right now. Um, so is DICE. So, and uh, 
Activision Blizzard have a lot on the line. So, and I think Activision has always been a very business centric company. They they've you know bragged in the past that if they put a price on something, you're gonna buy it. They know you will. And uh, and they're you know very smart about you know how they do microtransactions and getting money or whatever. Uh, EA is a little more free form and how they just decide you're just going to do what they want. Um, so they, they, they definitely have different business ta- tactics and you're seeing it here uh, in this situation as opposed to um, the the weird verbiage that uh, EA used with uh, and DICE used when um, that one guy fucking left DICE, aka got fired. So, yeah, which caused a big stir as well. So it's a better uh, uh, way of putting it than uh, don't you guys have phones? So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a bad situation. <laughs> so I think it's pretty cut and dry. I mean, it's yeah. not, but I think for us, I, I think we both agree. It was, it was, as soon as you got to the bottom, I was like, this whole thing makes complete sense. So yeah. they don't have to say anything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's all taken care of. There's I mean, the mystery of like why exactly doesn't really matter at this point because we know he's going away. Yeah. So, and uh, somebody else take over and uh, they did it. Uh, nice and safe and like i said like i'll say it again he's a cfo so this isn't this isn't punishing somebody for like underwhelming sales and games and stuff like that i mean like he would have some to do with that but there's other people they would come for first before him when it comes to these games aren't selling enough or yeah it's not even gaming related at all it's just company yeah, interest they would take out head directors and stuff first um and and uh let off people um who are part of uh, you know, or close company doors. That's yeah. what, that's what these guys usually do. So yeah. Let's on the comments though. What do you think about Activision letting this dude go? Do you think he's going to come back? Do you think there's any validity to that? Why do you think they did it? What do you think? Uh, some of the causes, do you think this is going to affect Activision blizzard in any negative way outside of the 1% drop? And, uh, what are your overall thoughts on Activision and blizzard or them, uh, together as a whole lately? And what do you think about, uh, people now talking about we are in, we have passed the first year of the AAA developer crash, which we've had before. Um, and, uh, do you think there's any validity to that? Um, but that's gonna do for this episode of Taste Tuesday on Taste Loop Gaming. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this episode. Make sure to check out our other episodes. Check us out on Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook at Taste Loop Gaming. Uh, check out my streams on Twitch at, uh, Tasty Senpai, all one word. Uh, hit the notification button to know when I go live. And if you're, uh, wanting to watch my streams on YouTube, you can do that as well. Cause when I stream, I dual stream. So if you're already here, you can watch it here. Uh, we have a Discord link down below. Talk to us anytime, all the time. We're on iTunes, uh, Spotify, and other podcast platforms. If you would prefer to listen to us, save some bandwidth, uh, while you're in the car wherever the hell you're doing listening to shit at work that's what i do all eight hours um and yeah my name's seth i'm chevy until the next episode which will be taste cast uh it'll be nice to return to that uh have a great week guys and take it easy